This is Todd back with another quarterback film breakdown. Alex Smith, hope everybody's doing great out there. This breakdown is brought to you by Hot Chicken Kitchen. Check them out, Nashville style chicken in Woodbridge, Virginia. Follow them on Twitter at Hot Chicken Kitchen, C H I K N K I T C H N. Okay, great food. Check them out. Alex Smith, 17 for 25, 166 yards, one touchdown, one interception, two sacks. He had a solid game. It was a classic Alex Smith game, except that he took some shots down the field more. Pressure took away some opportunities down the field. There was maybe one or two that he missed, but overall, a solid game by Alex Smith. Good enough to win. Better in the second half than in the first, probably because they got the running game going. So here we go. If you like the video, subscribe, comment, like it, share it, and follow us on Twitter at Tay and Todd Podcast. Here we go. First play of the game here, they've got outside receivers, Terry McLaurin and Cam Sims both running these coral routes, these deep coral routes, and then you've got Isaiah Wright running a seam, Logan Thomas is running over the middle right here, and then you've got Gibson leaking out of the backfield. This is all happening off the play action fake. Good decision here by Alex Smith to just dump this ball off. There's nothing going on down the field. Bengals cover it well. So check this ball down. And Gibson always turns the corner on guys. One thing I want to point out is Isaiah Wright. Watch him out of the slot. I don't love the effort on this seam route. Kind of seems like he knows he's not getting the ball. And so right about here he just gives up while Alex clearly still has the ball in his hands. Don't love that. Anyway, you get 10 yards from Antonio Gibson. Good decision there by Smith to check it down. All right, Washington has another first and 10 here after the first play. Bengals just running some base cover three, and this defender here does a good job of staying in his responsibility, staying in the flat where he's supposed to be making that tackle. If we look right here, we can see got a third, third defender. He's responsible for a third. He's responsible for a third, and then he's out here responsible for this flat. He's out here going to the flat, and so this defender right here does a good job not being dragged in by Cam Sims route or being drawn back by that route by Isaiah Wright. Logan Thomas leaks out into the flat, and he does a good job of staying in his responsibility and being right there to make a tackle. As soon as Logan has the ball, he doesn't even have a chance to turn around and try to make a move. Just a solid play right there by the Bengals. So second and 10 now after the catch for no gain. And I want you to just look at, at Scott Turner's offense and just the movement because you're going to have the play action fake or the run action fake. The entire def- uh, offensive line is going to move this way. And then you've got a bubble screen option up here. And then you've got the out route by Sims and Alex pre snap can determine where he wants the ball to go. Bengals are showing man here and that's not what you're looking for necessarily over on this side for the bubble screen because this defender is going to stay right with him. And so, man, you see you got the separation here. Cam Sims is just running a a simple out route about five yards. That's where you know you have your favorite matchup. So you go with the fake and then just throw it out. And that's just a veteran quarterback knowing where to go with the ball before the ball is even snapped. Now you've got third and two after the eight-yard gain to Cam Sims. And let's, let's wait for Logan Thomas to motion here. The Bengals covered this play well. Alex Smith did have an option on this play, one option that was open, but he wasn't looking that way, and I'll show you why. Anyway, Washington is running, you got Cam Sims running this button, sort of button hook right there again. Logan Thomas is running a bit of out and then back in. Sims is running this fade route. McKissick is running just out into the flat. Terry's running a slant. And so let's, let's let this play start to develop right about here. And Alex, he could put this here. In a moment, he'll look a lot less open. Cam Sims is not open. McKissick is not open. Logan Thomas is where he wanted to go. But this defender closes pretty quickly. So let's see right here. He's about to throw the ball to Logan Thomas. And I think he needs to just throw it because the alternative is you take a sack. So you'd like to see him not hesitate. Just throw it and see if Logan Thomas can make the tough catch. Right about here, like I said, Terry... Defender is going to be right there. You can throw one of those. Honestly, the best option here is look at Steven Sims up here. He gets this separation. Now it's third and two. You only need two yards. And and Alex doesn't even seem to look this way. The Bengals have a single high safety, and that's why you've got Logan Thomas is occupying the safety. He's, he's coming down that way. 
So Sims is is getting himself open. It's third and two. And so Alex doesn't even seem to look that way. He hesitates, and you can see it better from here, from this angle. He's got to let go of this ball, though. Also watch Morgan Moses because he gives up some pressure. He played a solid game at left tackle. This is one sack he gave up. I think Alex has got to get rid of this ball right when he's about to rather than hesitating. Because it's not going to be an interception if you give him a good throw right about here. If you throw it, you see the defender close in. You may get a pass interference call because he's, he's, he's there a little early on his back. But I think you just got to throw that ball. And then, like I said, at that same token, look at Steven Sims up at the top. He gets himself open, open, and Alex is just never looking his way. Again, probably because it's third and two, and you only need two yards. I bet if it's first and ten, Alex is looking Steven Sims' way. He identifies single high and sees the safety stay down low. He knows he's going to have Sims over the top. Want to see if he looks right at all. He looks right. I'm willing to bet he's looking right for Terry, though. Anyway, you take the sack, and, and you got to convert these third and twos to maintain these drives. You can't not convert, but much worse, you can't take a sack and lose five yards. First and ten, your second possession of the game. This is coming after a 14-yard run by McKissick. And, and watch this. I love this throw of this decision, and then I love the catch to Terry McLaurin. Terry doesn't really get open, but you give him an opportunity to make a play on the ball. Because it's just a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and he wins. I love that. On the last play, we looked at the third and two. Bengals running single high, and I said, remember, if it's first and ten, Alex is probably looking at the safety, and if he sees the safety come down, I bet he's looking Steven Sims' way. This time, he watches the safety. He knows that Cam Sims, Alex knows that Cam Sims is running this crossing route. So he's reading the safety. Safety gets back. All right, well, I'm hitting Cam Sims. Safety comes down on the crosser. Well, then I'm hitting Terry over the top. Alex, had, he throws a good ball that gives Terry McLaurin a chance where he puts it underneath because Terry is underneath the defenders over top of Terry. And you look at the safety does decide to go up. Then because of this crossing route underneath right here, Cam Sims would have been wide open. So it's a win-win play. It's a well-designed play, especially against the exact coverage that the Bengals were running. And it works, 42 yards. Good throw. Let's see it one more time. Good throw, good catch. First and 10 after the big play. Now look at this. They've got trips bunch right. And I love, I mean, this is, they're they're running a screen. It's a, it's a run action fake or maybe an RPO screen. And I mean, look at the numbers. You've got three, so essentially two blockers. And the closest man outside of this one is all the way back here, 10 yards back. The other one is over here. So I don't know if this is an RPO where Alex is deciding whether he wants to hand it off or whether it's designed to go to the screen. I'm, I'm guessing that it is an RPO, but he knows immediately. The moment he sees this, he knows he's working the screen. He honestly doesn't even hold the fake for too long. He goes to the screen pretty quickly. But there's one thing I want to point out. We talked about, and we used to always say this about Dwayne, that Dwayne would consistently, for the most part, throw these little bubble screens. Uh, he'd throw them well. It's it's such a small thing. But it matters because how you throw that ball, literally where you put it on the receiver, will give him the best opportunity to just catch and go. In this case, Alex doesn't give him the best, op the best ball. He puts it behind him, forces Terry to turn around, and then Terry has to reset and now he's got to go upfield. Whereas if you put this ball right about here and lead Terry that way, then he can get around the edge here because Cam Sims is blocking his butt off. He can get around the edge here and get you more yards. It ends up being only two yards, and I think that had a lot more to do, honestly, with just that slight difference of the throw being behind rather than out front and leading Terry where he can just catch it and go. Just a minor, minor thing that can definitely make a difference. Instead of maybe seven or eight yards, you get two yards. And that's the run action fake right there. So first and 10, you get the ball back after the fumble at the goal line. You scored on the drive before this. And I love this play right here. I love it, and I hate that Logan Thomas dropped this. It's it's so easy. I love the design. That was an accident. I love the design. Watch the fake left. Everyone's going this way. Everyone's faking this way. Logan Thomas is going to sneak back out this way and be just open with room to run. 
just the easiest possible catch, and he just he starts looking ahead before he catches and secures the ball. I mean, look at this room here. Logan Thomas is not a big yak guy, but he's he's getting ten yards easily after the catch after on the on this play. It's a well, well, well designed play. With all the action going this way, boom, 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 boom. All the action going this way. You got this going this way. Logan Thomas just sneaks back across the formation. And he's just, you know, he, he fakes like he's almost almost about to seal block right here. And then just goes out. And, and he's, he's there. <laughs> You've got to catch that ball. There's no excuse for that. Well-designed play. That should have given you another first and 10 at about the 30-something. Instead, it's second and 10. Man. Third and seven now. You got three yards on a run after the drop on first down. Alex taking a shot here. And, I mean, I love taking shots, especially to Terry. Terry does get about a step. The ball is slightly, slightly underthrown. It's third and seven, and I actually didn't think that this was Alex Smith's best option, though, on this play. I want you to watch Logan Thomas here just coming across the field. First of all, they got four, four right, <laughs> and Terry alone. So you're making this safety up top, right, because they're playing man. You're making the single high safety as much as you want to commit to Terry. I mean, you got to respect that there's four receivers in this side of the field. But I want you to watch Logan Thomas, all right? He's in the inside slot position, just running across the formation, and he actually gets separation running this crossing route. Third and seven. I mean, look at him right here. That's it. Those are the yards you need. Throw that ball, put it over top of this linebacker, the linebacker starts moving with this crossing route. So the linebacker's not fading back this way. The linebacker's staying down low. Throw this ball right about here. Not right about there, but fade it up just a little bit of touch to get it to Logan Thomas, and that's your seven yards. You take a shot to Terry, and I don't hate that, but it's the tougher throw and the tougher completion in this case. Watch it from behind the quarterback. There you go, empty set. And that's Rulier who ends up on his butt. But look, look at Logan Thomas right here. You know, he he is open for the yards that you need. I like the shot, but on third down, I want to take what they give me. And then Rulier actually, oh, wow, Rulier just stumbles by himself. Watch watch Rulier. He just he just trips over, over himself or over Schweitzer's foot, not from actually being blocked. Incomplete, and you're putting the ball. All right, so it's first and 10, and this is a similar... It's not a, it's not a same design play. You know, last time they had four by one, four on this side with Terry isolated. You get some motion pre snap. It's still not four by one. It's not the same play at all. But the routes being run by Logan Thomas and Terry McLaurin are almost identical in terms of where they end up. First and ten. You got another single high look right there. And Logan this time is he's lined up on the line essentially with his hand in the ground. But he's running this crossing route again. Terry's running this fly route again. Last time you threw the fly to Terry, Logan was open. Under through Terry, Logan was the better option. This time, motion. You throw the crossing route underneath to Logan. And this time, Logan's not open. And Terry is more open. <laughs> and I almost wish you could just switch plays. And last time, throw it to Logan. This time, throw it to Terry. Because Terry gets himself even more separation. And Logan gets himself less separation here. Incomplete. Incomplete. And that's one thing about Logan Thomas is he, he does not consistently separate. He can and he does at times, but it's not consistent. And you're going to have a much harder time. He has a much harder time separating against safeties and corners than linebackers. It was against a, a corner, I think a nickel corner last time. But anyway, no separation this time. Incomplete on first and ten. Third and four now. And these are the ones you, you have to convert these. You had third and two. You had third and four. They didn't score in the first half because they just weren't converting these these short third down opportunities. You're going to have Sims running this little out route right four yards where you need it. And then you're going to have Cam Sims running a deeper out route. Alex is reading right the whole time. All right. He's reading Steven Sims the whole time. He throws this ball a little bit short. And then Sims is not able to recover and get back. Sims does get himself open. But you know who else gets them open is the other Cam Sims. The other Sims. <laughs> Cam Sims. 
Look at this right here. Boom, he gets himself open right after the ball is thrown. Now, I really wish Sharp, at right tackle, first time starting, he gives up pressure here, and I wish he doesn't here. Alex Smith is reading right the whole time. He has to get this ball out because of this pressure. And again, you, you should be getting the first down because if you get this ball to Steven Sims without him having to take that step back to the ball, I think you convert there. But look at Cam Sims here. Now, I can't tell you if he's reading high to low, if this is his first read and this is his second, or if this is his first and this is his second. It looks like Alex Smith is reading Steven Sims the whole way. Looks like he's looking, I mean, it's it's tough to tell exactly. He might be looking Cam Sims and then coming to Steven Sims. It's tough to tell. But if he's got time, he may come, if he's, if he's reading one to two, let me go back just a bit. If he's reading right about here, if he's reading one to two, then he may be, he may get his eyes up to Cam Sims and have plenty of room to throw that ball and definitely get you that first down with maybe a bit of room for Cam Sims to run. But pressure doesn't allow time for that. And then you just have the slight underthrow, which I think is also a result of pressure. And then Sims just can't get his balance back. You got to convert these. Fourth and one, you punt the ball away. First and 10 now, you're trying to score before halftime. I want to show you the Bengals' defense here. We've talked about this so much. What does it look like? It looks like single high. It looks like single high man, maybe. Or it looks like cover three. Oof, oof. Forgive that one. <laughs> but anyway, that's what it looks like. Watch the safety once the play starts. Wow, he rolls down. Outside cornerback comes up here, and what do we have? Invert cover two. They're trying to disguise Alex the way that the Giants did when they intercepted him a couple weeks ago. You see the pre-snap motion by McKissick. He motions out of the backfield. If this was man, though, if this was truly man coverage, because I think that this right here is Terry McLaurin. If this is truly man coverage, then this defender is following McKissick out wide. But since he goes out wide and the outside cornerback just follows him out wide, that gives you an inclination that they're running zone. He is responsible for the furthest man, okay? But then watch him bail as soon as the ball is snapped. Cover two, invert. Interesting, interesting. Now, Alex, they we've seen Washington do this last week. They do it this week. This is the first time where he's IDing this all pre Pre-snap, Alex is probably keyed in. Probably not on invert cover two, but on zone. And he decides, I've got McKissick who's just going to sit here. They've decided they're, they're going to do this offensively, you know, where you just have your guy out wide just sit there while the other routes are pushing guys down the field, pushing the defenders down the field. Just get him the ball quickly, one-on-one, -on -one, see if he can make a man miss. He gets you four yards. But I just thought that was interesting. The Bengals there trying to fool Alex. And then Alex just gets the ball out quickly. And you get four quick yards. There wasn't much else happening down the field. A lot of quick routes called anyway. Boom. Four yards. First and ten out the 40. You've got 47 seconds. Now this is a play I talked about on Twitter. And this was a really, really big missed opportunity here by Alex and the offense. I don't know what this corner is doing. It looks like cover three because based on what this guy's doing and what this guy's doing, it seems like he's supposed to be getting his butt back there. But let's see what he actually does. He stays up and he tries to get his hands on Terry. Now, Terry wins easily. Uh, <laughs> I think, I don't know what that corner is doing. I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be getting back. But anyway, Terry is wide open here. Single high. All this room. And it almost looks, because Alex is reading left, it almost looks like Alex is going to throw him the ball. But I think what Alex sees is, is McKissick down here with all this room to work with. And so he just checks it down. You're trying to get yards quickly, move the ball. And so you get 11 yards. And now throwing it to McKissick was not a bad decision because you got 11 yards. It wasn't a negative play. And this is, it looks more like a blown coverage by the Bengals. But I, I wish that Alex, and again, I don't know. I don't know where Terry is. I'm. He's reading left the whole way. So he's either he's either reading McKissick the whole way or he's starting with Terry. Let me draw this so we can see it as one. 
And then if he doesn't like that, coming back to his check down as two. But man, is that a missed opportunity right there? Because I think if you get this ball and you drop it in with the safety rushing over there, I think Terry maybe scores. I think Terry either outruns him directly down the sideline or he catches this ball right about here and cuts back inside and, and that's it. Home run. That was an accident. I didn't mean to switch plays there. But that was a missed opportunity by Alex Smith. I want to see from this side. He starts middle. He reads the safety. And he comes left. And I think he's just looking McKissick's way. I think he's just looking McKissick's way the whole time. And this is when that check down mentality can hurt you. This is when it can start to hurt you when your mentalities are. I'm reading the safety. And then here he starts to look left. And this is right when Terry's getting open. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and say he's not looking Terry's way. I mean, he's looking McKissick's way, and he likes what he sees with the defenders all being back here. Missed opportunity to at least get you in field goal range. The, the bad part is the next play, as we'll see here in a second, results in an interception. I just want to see Cam Sims down here getting himself open. I love Cam Sims. Hope he continues to get opportunities. Also, Steven Sims getting himself open. <laughs> there were some opportunities and some options down the field on this play. There's pressure, so I don't expect Alex to start left and make his way all the way back. Start left and make his way all the way back right, necessarily. There were definitely some options to get you yards down the field that were missed on this play. And now it's first and ten. The clock is rolling. I really don't like this play call by Scott Turner. With the clock rolling... You're not in field goal range. You need 15 yards at least to get in field goal range. And you're just doing this. You're just doing this, essentially. All in, in inside routes. No one's getting to the sideline. No one's moving across this way or this way or this way or this way. It's There's 26 seconds. The clock is rolling. And you're just calling a play that is, is not going to get you a lot of yards and is not going to stop the clock. And you look and there's not much open. Terry's open. Would have loved for Alex to look Terry's way. Instead, he tries to get it in here to Logan. You get it to Logan. You get to what the Cincinnati 42 will be generous and say the 42. You had 26 seconds when the play started. I mean, <laughs> I don't like this play call. And then it ends up being an interception. Because he's trying to force the ball in there to Logan. And it just bounces off the six foot eight Bengals defender. I don't like the play call. I don't like the decision there by by Alex Smith either. And it's just it just ends up being bad. There was a bad sequence here. Wasted time. I thought the last call was good. I didn't like this play call in this situation. Turnover. Second and nine, and man, talk about pressure killing a play. First of all, this play makes me laugh because <laughs> Sheriff gives up pressure, and then the defensive lineman just has a hold of Alex's legs, and Alex is just he's just standing there. He I'm, he handled it well. It didn't end up being a sack. But man, look look at what's going on down the field, man. The safety rolls down. So Terry is open. Cam Sims is open. But at this point, Alex's leg is being held on to. Pressure just killed this play. Killed this play. Let's see it from behind the quarterback. This is Brandon Sheriff. Good player, but man, just bull rushed here. Bull rushed. Man, ugh, pressure kills this play. It always seems to be the plays where there's no pressure, that nobody's open, and the plays where there is pressure. I mean, he may have saved the touchdown here with this pressure. If Alex, if Alex, because I'd have to take a look. This may not be, I don't think it's the exact same play that we saw earlier on the long game to Terry McLaurin. It's not the exact same play, but similar concept. You got the crossing route by Cam Sims. You got the post route by Terry. So you're making this single high safety choose. Is he going to stay back? Is he going to come down? And he's got both of them. You've got both of them open. The safety ends up essentially choosing neither, but you're not able to get it to either of them because, 
moment he gets to the top of his drop, there's someone basically in his lap. He'd have to throw this ball immediately, and and he just doesn't. And I want to see if he's re if, if it looks like he's looking Cam Sims away or far right. He looks left. I think he wants Cam Sims. I think so. I'm not sure. But anyway, pressure killed this play. Should have been a big gain, possibly a touchdown. Third and nine, and we've been struggling on third downs. They're trying to just hit Isaiah Wright on a screen. He's good in these situations. He's good with the ball in his hands. So you've got this, you've got this, and then you've got these tackles coming out, tackle uh, guard, and then Rulier, and we're one block away from getting this first down. This play is well blocked, really, for the most part. We're one block away, and it's Rulier's block. That stops you two yards short. If if Rulier, I don't like saying that name a lot, Rulier, Rulier. If Rulier right here is able to hold his block just, just enough right here. If he's able to hold that just enough, because that's the guy that ends up essentially making the tackle. If he's able to hold it just enough to get a couple more yards, you've got the first down. It's that fourth down, you're punting again. And so far, I think Alex is... Has he hasn't made any critical mistakes, but he's definitely missed some opportunities, and then also pressure has robbed him of some opportunities. So overall, the offense is just not clicking. First and ten now after a 19-yard run. Terry McLaurin just up at the top of the screen. He's gonna run in, and then boom, back out. Good route, get yourself open. Alex throws it on time. I think he runs a good route. Honestly, I think the Bengals defender plays it better than he could have. If he jumps all the way inside right here, Terry's even more open. He he at least is there to make the tackle as opposed to getting beat and allowing Terry to run up the sideline. 14 yards on first and 10. And interesting, I think this actually might be the cover two high safety right here with him. Just interesting to note there. Cam Sims also over the middle finds a spot in the middle of the zones right here. Finds himself a spot. So you had options on this play. 14 yards. Second and three at the Cincinnati three. And Alex Smith does a really good job here of not allowing the pressure to rush or force anything. He knew that Steven Sims was going to come open. He just had to wait for him. Steven Sims is just running a crossing route all the way across the field. All the way across the field. And he knew that all he had to do was, boom, clear. This linebacker, this underneath defender, once he did that, he knew he's open. He's got the pressure coming. He doesn't rush the throw. He doesn't throw too early. He doesn't throw too hot. He stands in there, gives Sims enough time to clear it, and you get the touchdown. Takes a, takes a shot, not a, not a hard shot, but does get taken to the ground there. Morgan Moses gets beat right around the edge right there by Lawson. Gets beat around the edge, but gives him just enough time. And Alex, Alex does take a bit of a shot there. But you get the first, um, not the first down, you get the touchdown. So a good play there to stand in the pocket. Touchdown. Second and eight, and you got a really good fake here that just opens up the middle of the field so much. Such an easy throw and catch for McLaurin and Smith. I mean, look at this. Look at this. I mean, it's just, it's completely clear. The linebackers are nowhere to be found. See right here? He's staying up. He's hesitating. He's staying up. He's hesitating. And I think there's another one in there that gets blocked. Maybe not. And you also got a blitz off the edge. So the linebackers, the two underneath linebackers are just Nowhere to be found. Just the easiest, easiest catch and throw right there. 25 yards to Terry. Easy, man. Love to see love to see Terry McLaurin getting the ball. First and 10 now after the big play. This is actually a pass interference, but I want to just look at it. Again, Alex Smith throwing down the field, which love to see. Single high. So we're going to take some shots down the field towards the sideline because we know that the safety is not going to be able to get there. So let's just let's take a shot with the fake play action. Boom! Have time, a clean pocket. He just he just overthrows it. Now you get the pass interference. I do want to point out Isaiah Wright. I don't think he he has a great get off. 
Um, you see, he takes a lot of steps that I don't think help him. Boom, 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 boom. and then, and then, and then ultimately doesn't really get over top of the the defender much. I think I just think that's something he's got to get better at. I think it's something he can get better at. Work with Terry McLaurin on it. You see, Terry McLaurin is up at the top of the screen. And if, if we're if we're trying to decide whether we want to go Terry or Wright, maybe you want to go Terry. But either way, Isaiah Wright's a big guy. Give him a chance, 50-50 ball. So my only knock on this play would be give him a chance. Get the ball where he can try to go up and get it. But you get pass interference, so it's a positive play. Almost counts like a catch. Second and nine now after a one-yard Peyton Barber run. Terry's just, he's running his classic slant. Defender is in his face, and Terry just actually doesn't really get open. You know, sometimes it happens. Played well by the Bengals defender. And Alex has got to throw this ball quickly because he's really almost just taken like a one-step drop. You see right there, drop and throw. You're trusting Terry to get open. One of the few chances, uh, not chances, one of the few times that he doesn't. It's tough to tell if Terry drops this because it kind of looks like it's a drop on just a tight coverage kind of throw. But incomplete. Cam Sims at the top, up at the top. Cam Sims is running a bit of a stack and then out. And it seems like he gets open. Not sure if the defender kind of knows the ball has been thrown. It seems like so. Maybe not. But anyway, you're just trying to hit Terry and, and it just he just doesn't, you know, he doesn't win. Sometimes that happens there. Not much else happening on the play. Third and nine now. I think the Bengals just really call a well-timed, well-designed blitz here. Washington is empty, right? No one in the backfield with Alex Smith. Five wide. And so the Bengals, they, I mean, this is easy math. They've got five in protection. If the Bengals bring six, they've got a free rusher. You're forcing the quarterback to throw the ball hot, okay? So let's look at it from over top of the quarterback. The Bengals have six, maybe really seven potential rushers if they bring a cornerback blitz off the edge now they don't they've got three over two here and so what really would need to happen is probably boom 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 and then have your free rusher be right there what happens is boom 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 he fake rushes draws in schweitzer and then he drops back into coverage Schweitzer ends up blocking nobody, and then Moses, and then your free rush comes from the defensive left, the offensive right. And so Alex really just has no time to throw the ball, right? Because he's got this rusher in his face immediately. Maybe he knows there's going to be a free rusher, or at least know there's a chance for it. There doesn't really seem to be a hot drawn up in this play too much. Maybe that's this, but that doesn't really seem exactly like a hot. And if it is a hot, then he's taken way too much time to be the hot that Steven Sims it looks like you would have to just break that route in quickly and immediately so in completion I think a, a good call defensively there by the Bengals I want to point out Cam Sims because he's running a in and then up and, and he wins Alex doesn't have time to get him the ball but I think it's a good route by Cam Sims man look at that I think he almost maybe even gets held there but then you have this route breaking in, and, and this eliminates this because Alex, if he did, if he hypothetically, if he has time to throw this ball, he throws this up here, well, there's going to be traffic up there that isn't supposed to be there. So I kind of wonder about that. Anyway, incomplete, another failed third down. But at least you get the field goal on this drive. Second and eight here, and they've got five wide. They motion the back out of the backfield again. They are backed up at the five-yard line. Obviously, any quarterback, got to get this ball out quick. They've got three lined up over here. That's supposed to be a two. It's not. Try that one more time. Let's say one, two, three. Okay. The Bengals have really one, two really over here. These routes pushing these defenders back. And it looks like the Bengals are trying to get to inverted cover two like this. Okay. So this, this outside cornerback is going to bail immediately. And this is something, again, we saw them do it last week. We saw them do it earlier in this game where the receiver, against zone coverage, he's just sitting. He's not running a route. No, he's just, ball is snapped, and he's just, boom, he's staying right there. 
And it's an easy throw and catch, you know, in situations like this. Well, look at this. You got all this room because cornerback bailed and, and this defender, 21, cannot commit outside immediately. Cam Sims gets the ball and gets 12 yards. A play. This is a play that Ron Rivera talked about with Alex Smith just being a veteran and just knowing, seeing the defense and just knowing where to go with the ball. Boom, just get that ball out there. Immediately give him time to work. You get 12 yards. It's a good play. A good play, and it was perfectly timed specifically against that inverted cover, too, because that cornerback is bailing so much. So perfect timing. Third and two. Now, this is a good call that works extremely well against exactly what the Bengals are running. Watch Cam Sims motion across the formation, and when you see that cornerback follow him all the way across the formation like that, you know that's man. So we know that it's man, and based on that, we pretty much know that it's like this. You know, the linebacker is responsible for McKissick. We've got, looks like Logan Thomas, Cam Sims running in here. And that's going to cause that traffic so that right here, he's going to have trouble getting outside to McKissick. And let's watch it happen. Look, he has to run through all of that. So McKissick is, is just wide open. And this is just excellent, you know, knowledge by Alex Smith, just knowing I've got the man. I've got these routes holding this defender up. I'm going to hit McKissick immediately. You don't hesitate. You just hit him immediately. Hike, hit him. Man, boom. Get him the ball. 11 easy, easy yards. Second and six now, and here we've just got a bunch of out routes. Out, 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 slant. Just a bunch of out routes. And we know that he's off here. He's going to take a back pedal a bit and then just hit Steven Sims on the out. And that's exactly what happens. Get you an easy seven yards in second and six. Don't even get to third down. Very good. I like having Steven Sims back. It's good that he's back out there. He is definitely a weapon. He's getting the ball. Just want to watch this one more time. Alex looks right and just throws. Easy. Second and 22 now. After a clipping penalty knocks you back 15 yards. It's 17 to 9 now. So you really do need to score here. You've got a slant, 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 flat. And Bengals are running man. Not much open. I mean, I think Alex makes the right read here. I think his best options on this play are Terry up top or Logan underneath because you got this slant holding up this defender a bit. Get it out to Logan, and, you know, he doesn't really get much after the catch. You get six yards on second and 22. It's third and 16 now. You're trying to get some yards. They're trying to hit McKissick out of the backfield on the screen. It is man coverage again. The Bengals, third and 16, man, single high. The linebacker, man coverage against McKissick. He just reads screen all the way, and he's there. Alex Smith just has to throw this ball into the dirt, essentially. You see, he just, he reads it. He's right there, man. He's right there. So you got to just, I mean, at this point, yeah, just throw this ball into the ground. Lift to fight another down. Make sure that you don't take a sack. Make sure that your kicker is still is still in field goal range. There's really nothing else you can do here. First and ten now with six minutes left. Up twenty to nine, so you really want to score. Now they go with the bootleg. We haven't seen a lot of this with Alex. We haven't seen a lot all year, honestly. And Terry McLaurin is here, man. He's he is he's open. And I'm really curious as to why Alex doesn't just throw this ball. I think that should have been 15 yards there at the end of the play. But let's try to take a look at why uh, take a look at what Alex is seeing by looking from behind. Now either he is concerned about this over the top defender coming down and making a play on that ball which is not happening or he's concerned about this underneath defender getting up and making a play on that ball. I don't think either of those are happening and right here especially neither of those are happening. I'm curious if since he's rolling right that's a lot of stress on that right leg that he'd be that surgically repaired leg he'd have to throw off of. So I'm wondering if that at all plays a factor into the decision. Um, you know, he, he, he can't just stop. He can stop, but then he's likely taking a shot. He keeps moving. So I'm curious as to why he, he opts not to throw this ball. It's just interesting because I think you just throw this ball right here easily and get some yards there. Instead, you take a, a zero-yard sack. 
it's it's interesting. I'm really curious as to why he doesn't throw this ball. There is no reason to hold on to it there. And I just wonder if it has anything to do with the leg or not. First and 10 now with six minutes left. You're up 20 to 9. I think you still would like to score here, though, you know, if possible. Alex, just, they just call a bootleg. You know, we haven't seen a lot of this, especially with Alex in there. He can move, clearly. I think that should have been a flag there at the end, maybe. I'm curious as to why he doesn't throw this ball to Terry. Because you've got Terry wide open here. And he opts not to throw. He just decides to run. Let's look behind the quarterback and see if we can get a better idea why he decides not to throw this ball. There's no way he's not looking Terry's way, right? And my guess is he's either, if we go back just a bit, is that right about here, he's either worried about this defender coming down, maybe making a play on the ball really once it's gotten to Terry, or this defender underneath getting up and making a play on the ball. But I don't think either of those are happening or a legitimate concern, so I really don't know why Alex doesn't throw this. Part of me wonders if he's rolling right, he's throwing this. If he throws it while running right, it puts a lot of stress on that right leg, that surgically repaired leg. So I wonder if that plays a factor into his decision at all. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I just find it interesting that he decided not to throw this ball. Just not exactly sure what he was seeing or where he was looking yet. But Terry McLaurin is definitely wide open here. You end up taking a sack for no yards lost, but it should have been some yards down the field. Just interesting. Not exactly sure what was going through Alex's mind, but the game is over almost, and you end up winning, so it's not a critical play in the game, and I'd be curious to see a play like this earlier in the game if he handles it differently. Overall, giving Alex Smith a B- minus for the game, you know, there were some opportunities that I pointed out where he should have not gone downfield where he did or vice versa. I like that downfield attacking mentality. It's good to see, and it definitely worked on the long throw to McLaurin. But then again, we saw in third and seven where he had Logan Thomas underneath and opted down the field. Overall, solid performance, nothing to write home about, enough to win. I think you'll need more from him in the future if you're going to win games. He doesn't need to throw over 300. I think somewhere in the 220 range, and I think about 25 to 30 attempts is a good number for him. But he's, he did well under pressure. He was accurate overall, and he delivered the ball well. So I thought he played a solid game. Want to see more next week. Thank you again. Subscribe, like, comment so we can chat up. Follow us on Twitter at Tay in Todd Podcast and check out Hot Chicken Kitchen. They have great food. Thank you for watching. See you next week.